be united with who you are. See, one part of us wants to do what God says, and then if you aren't careful, there's another part that divides us and wants to do what we want to do. All right? That's division. And whenever you are divided, what does the Bible say? A double-minded man is unstable, not sometimes, in everything that he does, in all things. All right? Um, so we see then that uh, Jesus says, and I will, let's reference very quickly Philippians chapter number 2. We are a part of the kingdom, and we, we need to function in a spirit of unity uh, and, and a spirit of harmony so that we can accomplish everything that God has ordained. Philippians chapter number 2 Verse number one says, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy uh, by being like minded. All right. Like minded. He said, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. And then he said, let nothing be done through selfish ambition. You see that spirit? He said, because if you do whatever you do and it's out of selfish ambition, it's not going to bring harmony. Huh? He said, don't do it through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. And so this morning, let's go further. I want to give you Four, uh, several D's, D's, D's. The other week, I got stuck on the letter D. And we talked about kingdom soldiers, and we talked about that in a kingdom soldier, uh, there, there's divinity. And we talked about not only was there um, divinity, but what was the next one? We're different, all right? We're different. And then we are what? devoted. And so I got stuck on D's. So I got some more D's. We should function in our homes, in our marriages, with our friendships as it relates to politics and as it relates to church and even within ourselves by these important D's. Somebody say D's, D's, D's. All right? All right? The first D is determination. All right? Say determination. All right? We, we've got to get to a place that we determine God's highest revelation in any matter. All right? In other words, what does God say? All right? Now, now I know what you say. I know what I say. I know what my opinion is. I, I, I know what your opinion But what does God say? See, we need to be seeking. We've got to determine uh, the highest revelation in a matter is what God says concerning that matter. Do I have anybody? See, we often don't take the time to see what God says and what God expects in any matter. But do you understand that the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truths in every matter? Do y'all believe that? that he's concerned uh, about every aspect of your life. He's not just waiting until you get to church uh, to start dealing with you. He's in your life so that he can direct us uh, and uh, protect us and correct us all throughout the week. He's concerned about where you go, what, where you spend your time, who you spend your time with, what decisions you make in your life. He's concerned about all of those things, and, and we must understand that we will experience kingdom success when we refuse to be satisfied until we get God's highest revelation, all right? You can be talking in your marriage with each other. You can be talking with your fiancé. You can be talking with your children uh, in any other relationship. We can be discussing things in church, in meetings, in, in uh, ministries, and the ultimate Factor is, let's see what God says. All right? 
Turn over to 2 Timothy, chapter number 3. 2 Timothy, chapter number 3. Go down to verse number 16. How many of you know this is back to the Bible month? Huh? Verse 16, all scripture. Somebody see that word, all. Come on class, say all. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man or the woman of God may be complete, may be whole, all right, may be perfect, thoroughly equipped for every good work. See, God, God's, God's highest revelation uh, uh, is the Word, and the Word is God. God is the Word, all right? And so we get all of the Scripture. The Scripture uh, is inspired of God, and it, it is beneficial to us for doctrine, which uh, leads us in understanding how to go about uh, our Christian walk for reproof. Sometimes he has to get on us. For correction, sometimes he has to bring us in the line. For instruction when I'm not sure uh, in the things of righteousness because I've got to learn how to do righteously according to the Spirit because it can't just be the way I think righteousness is. I can't go about establishing my own righteousness but I've got to submit to what? The righteousness of God. And the only way I can get the righteousness of God in a matter is that I've got to get it from the Word. He says, so that you can be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, so that's the first D. If we're going to have a kingdom advancement, if you're going to have success, if you're going to stop being polarized in every situation and circumstance in life, you on one end and uh, somebody's on another end and there's struggle and, and so much uh, selfish ambition that nobody will submit. But you got to get to the point that we determine in the matter God's highest revelation. Don't you want God's highest revelation? That's what he said. Whatever God says, when you're praying about it, when you're trying to make a decision, and you know you, you, you can test it, you can say, well, I know what I'd like to do, but God, I wonder, is this what you would have me to do? Is this the direction you would have us to go? Because really, we won't see victory and success without doing it God's way. Are we together? All right, somebody say the second D is decision. Okay? Here's what... It falls right after determination. We've got to decide to surrender our personal preferences to God's preferences. All right? The spirit of the world would rather tear something up than to surrender to what God said. Selfish ambition says, I would rather see it destroyed than to decide to surrender to the word and the will of God. And that's in relationship, that's in church, uh, that, my God, you'll see it on the job. You'll see selfish ambition, uh, which is the spirit of Lucifer, released in uh, all the places in society. And it will rather see something broken down than to submit. And that's why, that's why we have so much division among each other. That's why there's so much division in relationship. That's why uh, we see uh, such challenges in the marital uh, uh, relationship. We see such challenges between parents and children because the spirit of Lucifer uh, doesn't, doesn't want there to be any agreement. And we got to, we've got to decide that I'm going to surrender to the preferences of God. I know my preference. And see, the thing that we can't uh, trust our own preference is because our preferences were rooted in flesh. And so our, our human spirit has been regenerated, reborn again. And so I've got to now tune in to what the spirit that has been regenerated in me says so that it can direct my soul and it can direct my body. I've got to decide. Somebody say decide. And then the third D is discover. Say discover. 
All right? Discover. Now, transformation, growth, and advancement are the results of allowing the kingdom of God to come upon us. Now, when you go back over to Matthew chapter number 12, here's a man who couldn't speak, couldn't hear, and was possessed by demons. Would you say that was a success? Huh? No. But, but understand this, that when Jesus, in verse number, uh, when, when the Bible says in verse 22 that, that he healed him so that he could speak and see, my God, that's something right there. We need to be able to speak and see. And, and, and then it goes on and he says, um, he says in verse number 28, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. In other words, success, kingdom success, uh, is, is it comes upon us whenever we submit. Uh, whenever we discover uh, uh, God's will and release and let God's uh, spirit be released on that situation because when God's spirit was released, when Jesus uh, spoke and healed that man, that man walked in kingdom success. He started to, to be able to hear, he started to be able to speak, and the demons left him. And so transformation, growth, and advancement are the results of the kingdom of God coming upon us. And whatever we do by the Spirit of God in every relationship, we will find that there will be kingdom success. Think about the first century 